Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here to assuage the wrath of the evil god Cancrazans, who has sworn to destroy all of classical music but for one work per composer or one album per artist. Uh, and today, the question is, if I could choose only one album by Artist X, it would have to be their recording of work P. Well, Artist X is Andre Previn. Work P is William Walton's first symphony. I mean, this recording has received so much acclaim, it's really a no-brainer, isn't it? You know, Andre Previn's career was made by this recording in some respects, you know, as a serious composer of classical music. And this was really an inspired choice. Most of Previn's recordings, as you may remember, were made for uh, EMI with the London Symphony Orchestra. That was his big legacy, the big chunk of his work. But before then, he was with RCA. And there's a big box of RCA stuff, which is some of which is quite fine. That contains his Vaughan Williams Symphony Cycle, for example. This, his first Shostakovich Fifth Symphony, and a lot of other stuff. And, and he was really... When he was young, particularly, and very good composer, later on, he became much more soft-edged. You know, as I used to say, he didn't have much fire in his belly. He, he sort of schmoozed around a lot and became less interesting. And he remade this symphony, too, this Walton first, for Tellark, a performance that wasn't nearly as good. Uh, really, not a bit. And even sonically, in some ways, inferior. It was really kind of amazing how good this was. It was recorded in 1966. And until 1966, there really were no great recordings of Walton's first symphony. I mean, they thought there may have been. Who, who did the Malcolm Sargent did one. Walton himself did one. There were some historical things running around. But the truth of the matter is there wasn't anything that came even close to this in terms of ferocity and accent and excitement, all of which is indicated in the score, I might add. You know, Walton was very, very picky. He was dissatisfied with the prevailing standards of performance at the UK. His preferred artists were the Cleveland Orchestra and George Sell for their precision and, and you know, just virtuosity and technical flair. Walton was a slow composer. His scores are minutely notated in extreme detail. And his, his dissatisfaction with English musical life was such that he, he moved to the island of Ischia, spent most of his life outside of the UK. And I think as a result of that, his music since his death really has somewhat slipped in public favor. While he was alive, he was getting a lot of attention. But since he died, which was in 1980-something, I recall, if I recall correctly, um, his music hasn't been much, uh, hasn't been given that much attention or as much attention as I think it deserves, because it's extraordinarily well-crafted and beautiful, and there are many, many fine works, this being one of them. So, um, where are we with this? Well, since this recording, um, there have been quite a few very, very good ones. I mean, really good ones. I mean, Charles McCarris did a really good one. Brian Thompson did a really good one. Andrew Litton, Leonard Slatkin, of course. Uh, really fine versions and very exciting versions. It's no longer um, unusual to hear performances with this kind of technical virtuosity and finish. But this was all the more remarkable when it was issued because it was the London Symphony Orchestra, which had been recording mostly with Pierre Monteux. Remember, he was their music director for life until like 1963 or something like that when he passed away. And they weren't known as a precision band. They just weren't. But with Previn um, giving this sort of a youthful shot of adrenaline, wow, what a different ensemble they became. Uh, and he really achieved amazing things with during his LSO tenure, some fantastic recordings. But this was uh, primus inter pares, as they say, first among equals of his greatest recordings. And certainly it remains the reference recording for Walton's first. It is better quite a bit better than the composer's own recordings. I mean, I just did a video um, today, in fact, actually, about composers' own versions of things being reference recordings. And the Walton First is another interesting example because, yes, it's authoritative in the sense that Walton conducted it, but the sonics aren't great, the playing <laughs> isn't great. It's, it's not a great performance of the symphony. It doesn't realize all of what 
Walton wrote into his score, not nearly as well as Previn and the LSO do it. And when this came out, interestingly enough, it immediately, immediately eclipsed Walton's own version. I mean, nobody thought about it anymore. It's available. It's around. You can listen to it. But if you listen to it after you listen to this, you're just going to go. Oh. So this, it, it outpaced the composer's own version. It was clearly the best version of the work at the time it was recorded. It remains among the best ever recorded, for sure, um, and a first choice, I, I think, still in the work. And, and also one of the finest things that Previn ever did at one of the best periods in his entire career. And for all of those reasons, if I had to choose but one recording by Andre Previn to propitiate the evil god Cancrazans and tell him to like knock it off and let us hear the rest of Andre Previn's achievements, which as I pointed out before are considerable, um, this is the one. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.